All right, welcome back, Water Collective Podcast. We have got something special for y'all today. Um, dropping it on an off week, this is going to be like a little bonus podcast. Going to see what y'all think of it. Um, Austin is not here, but we had a little happy hour at the office, a little turkey hunting deal, getting ready for the season, and I have talked some people into staying with me and podcasting and talking about turkey hunting a little bit. So. I got Chad Roberts, who you might know from the Country Jamie saga. And I've also got Davis McGinnis with me. So, what's up, boys? Hola. I kind of forgot that uh, all the stuff back from the lease and Jamie's hunting and Big Ten. and forgot I got a lot of redemption on here. Yeah, so you're you're kind of a name that people know on the pod because – you and Jamie had a little contest there for a little while that neither of y'all won. Yeah, but, we were going back and forth, and uh, then he shot the big eight or big nine. Say big yeah, nine. I don't. So Jamie, country Jamie hadn't been back on here. We hadn't talked about the fact that he did actually kill one out there, um, and he says it's a nine point. We he does would have a kicker. Yeah, he's got a. If you can put a ring on it, it counts. He's got a quarter inch <laughs> kicker. So. Uh, but he was happy, and that's all that matters. But we're not here to talk deer hunting today. We are, like I said, we had the happy hour to kind of get ready for turkey season, and we may or may not have a cold beer in here while we're recording. Um, we're here to talk about turkey hunting and give you all something on, really for our Mississippi listeners, because turkey season opens next Friday, and we want to drop something to get y'all thinking about it, even though I know that's already that's all that's on your mind. If you're like us, Chad, I'm not worried about that crack. Yeah, we're I've already I'll said we're drinking one. cold beer during this. This is a bonus episode. This is not an official episode, so if you don't like it, that's okay. If you do like it, we might do more bonus episodes. So we're just going to kind of talk about. Um, Mississippi turkey season, maybe some stories, some gear stuff, just a little bit of whatever. Um, but I guess get, getting into it, what I want to start with is, um, all right, opening day's Friday. Davis, I know you might have to work. Chad, I know you're going to be out there. I'm going to be out there. I'll kind of get into my stuff here in a second, but I want to ask you all first. All right, Thursday night. You're getting your stuff ready. You're getting your vest fixed up. Um, what's in there? What gun are you toting? What shells are you shooting? Uh, are you are you listening the night before? Just kind of what's your routine the night before turkey season? Kind of like you're back, I guess, like back when you believed in Santa Claus and you were getting ready for the night before Christmas. But what's your what's your deal night before turkey season? Davis, go ahead. I don't get too caught up in a ritual, but I, uh, the number one thing I got in my turkey vest before turkey season is a roll of toilet paper. <laughs> I'm going to have that in there. That's important. Sure, oh, in, yep. that's a necessity when it comes to me. If I get out of that, tur- uh, got out of that truck, I'm going to have that toilet paper. So I got a toilet paper. I got a mouth call. I got a box call. I got some thermosel. And that's about it. I don't get too caught up on what I got in my turkey vest. To be completely honest with you, I don't get. uh, So let's. So is it uh, as far as your calls? Do you have a certain cut with your mouth call that you worry about, or you just kind of whatever you're feeling that year? Do you have a special box call? I got a Primo's V cut that I've been running. That's all I can blow. Really, is a V cut. So I got that one in there. Um. I got an old box call. I don't even know what it is. Uh, <clears throat> let me see. What else do I keep in there? I keep an extra little pad because I broke my tailbone when I was in college. <laughs> so it gets a little rough out there. I've done that before. It hurts. Yeah, I think Chad might have been there when I broke my tailbone. <laughs> Y'all both broke your tailbones in college. I did. I wasn't That's there a hard when bone Chad, to break. Yeah, I, didn't, I wasn't there when Chad broke his, but I was living with him. So me and uh, Bo and Chad have been – friends for quite some time and we kind of grew up turkey hunting together i guess we learned the ropes so this is kind of cool for us all being here talking about it yeah and i was thinking about before we got on this podcast i have 
killed a turkey with both of y'all. So, oh, yeah. Oh, I have not. I don't think. Yeah, no, never mind. I have. I was about to say, I'm not sure. I've watched Chad pull the trigger, and I've pulled the trigger with him. I've pulled the trigger with you. I have not watched you pull the trigger, but I've been on a trip where you kill one. So mm-hmm. We um, did. We went to Indiana. But that, me, was, that was pretty cool. That was. That We've was, all seen each other miss, I'm pretty sure. Well, I know both of y'all have seen me miss when with, with my struggles. And we might get into – we might have to get into missing. But, uh, all right, Chad, you're you're getting your stuff ready. Uh-huh. Chad's a little bit more meticulous than I am, so he's probably going to have a better answer than mine. But, hey, toilet paper is going to be in his bag. Toilet, too, toilet paper bet. is in the bag. All right, it's Thursday night, opening the morning is Friday. What you putting in there? What's your setup? Tell me your setup. Oh man, it's a it's a stress night. Uh, making my pot of coffee, setting the timer on that, going through the whole calls, the best, uh, going through my vest. Pretty much everything in there is going to be. Oh man, I take a lot of calls with me. I have two or three different diaphragm calls. I'll have at least two slate calls that I use. Really, only have one. Got a new one last year that I've been trying to run a little bit. Uh, have a handy dandy box call that I always take. Uh, for sure, have a thermostat, uh Always have the roll of toilet paper. Man, as far as I hate to cut you off for a second, but as far as thermosels, man, I always like to think that you're not going to need them the first couple weeks of the season. But I was listening yesterday. And getting bit by mosquitoes. And, I've I mean, been seeing a lot of bugs at the house. I, mosquitoes are out. Uh, I don't really ever use it. I do if I'm sitting there for a while, but sometimes I get too caught up and I forget to, oh, let me pull out this thermosel in my pocket and cut it on. I do spray down with bug spray. Uh, maybe that helps me so I don't see a lot of bugs, but I usually keep that in my vest. Uh, pretty excited this year. Got a new vest. Uh, pretty pumped about it. Where are you it. running? I got a new Sitka vest. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It hey. A, it was a gift to You can't me. hide money. Uh, it was a gift. It was a gift. So, I'll, I'll take gifts. Uh, but pretty excited. It's a pretty cool vest. It's lightweight. Oh, I, and gun. I, I've looked at them. They, uh, they look cool. It's got a cool be. backpack on the back, man. You can, like, put all sorts of stuff in there and some things you don't ever think about. But, you know, you go out west hunting and the temperature changes from very cold to, you know, warming up in the evenings, you... You might need to throw another layer of clothes in there or put something in that vest. And water. And, when you don't think about it, oh, but man. water is you a know, big water's thing. A, you know, a when you're uh, necessity. when you're hunting here, you know, or anywhere that you're hunting locally, you can go hunt for a couple of hours. You can run back to the truck or whatever. But you mentioned out west, and you go out there. I mean, you need to. You might have to hike in an hour or so, and you don't need to. You may not get back to the trunk till dark. Yeah, or you know. Going for several hours, you know. I looked at taking the camel bags with you. But I do every single hunt I go on. I, I take mean, mine, even if it's here. I because, thought about just because I don't like because water bottles make noise, but um, they will. They make it uncomfortable sitting on a tree when you got four water bottles in your back and you start leaning up on a tree and you're like, "Damn!" What's and he's close, and you crunch, like, yeah, and all of a sudden it's yeah. just. <laughs> Uh, so that's pretty much all I do as far as the vest. I don't really have rituals, uh, you know. What's your call cut? Do you have a go-to call uh, cut? Man, I kind of just play with a bunch of different calls. What I have on here, I guess this is like a, I know it's a KB hen, houndstooth call. I guess that's a back, I guess that's a bat wing cut. Uh, kind of like that, man. It, it It's done pretty good. Got into it last year. Bought a couple of Dave Owen calls, uh, using a few of those, but I always kind of go back to this KB Hen. She just sounds real good. And, uh, I'll tell you a little secret, man. I, I usually keep that, and I like to use my slate call, you know, early in the morning, trying to do a little tree yelping, which I can get pretty soft on this diaphragm too. And I tell you, I've struck more turkeys midday with a box call than I have any call I have in my vest, so I do always carry that. And, you got plenty of pockets on there, so I don't go to the woods wishing I'd had something. I make sure I got it before I go. So, yeah, I go just. I'll talk about mine, I guess, for a second. Which I don't know why. I wear my vest every single time I go turkey hunting, but I don't know why. I take a thermosel and a mouth call. That's 
That's it. I mean, that's it. Uh, I use one mouth call till it runs out or wears out. And then I'll get another one, the exact same one. But that's it. But I take a vest every single time. Uh, as far as if you actually went through my vest, you would find probably, let's see what I actually carry. I carry two sets of gloves, two sets of face masks, thermocell, probably 10 of the little blue things that go in the thermocell, an extra butane. I'm sitting here saying I don't need to take a vest, and then I'm thinking about all this stuff I tote. I got all that in mind. Cigarette lighter. I do have a cigarette lighter in there. I don't know why. I feel like I've ever got deserted out there. I have something to make fire. Well, I was taking those. Uh, I was thinking I was, you know, little Dave Owens taking my cigars. And then last year I thought I was going to switch to a pipe, killed that turkey opening day, and tried to smoke that pipe by myself. And it was not enjoyable, <laughs> not one bit. So that died. I got it better to smoke a than a second. pipe, maybe. Yeah, that, uh, that died real quick. But so that was, all right, so I got it. Thermocell stuff, the gloves, the face mask, the cigarette lighter, the um, slate calls. Got the uh, sandpaper for the slate calls. Got a box call that I never use. My slate calls that I have the stuff for, I never use. Probably, I bet I have eight to ten mouth calls that I don't use. I use one. Um... Let's see. Do I have anything else? Mm. I got some extra shells in my bag. Oh, yeah, shells. 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 I got a piece of toilet paper, too, if you need it, but don't be coming to me for that. I I do keep... Hey, Bo's got a lot of stuff. I do take some old Remington Nitros, some old shells I had back in the day. The four shot? Oh, yeah, I got some fours. Chad's big on them fours, baby. I used to like fours and six. I would always shoot. You know, back in the day before TSS became a thing, you used to always have to worry about... I don't even know. Did we have nine shot back in the day? No. Well, you I mean, yeah, was, that was bird nine. shot. Yeah, that was yeah. Usually you had a four. You took it dove, like, hunting. I think five was as much as you want. Like, five was as high as you wanted to go to try to kill a turkey. I, I would have five or sixes, and I remember a long time ago, I always thought, you know, you shoot a five, six shot, you get a big wide pattern, you're backing that up with a two or four, you know, you're shooting bone, bird, trying to just knock <laughs> What, are you down. taking buckshot out there? I mean, yeah, I, mean, I yeah, it out yeah. of his vest one time. I was like, I don't know if this is legal. Hey, you always shoot a number six first and backing it up with some number fours, man. That the nitro turkey, away. man, that used to be the thing. The but n- the nitro, nitro, the little green shells? The nitro turkey was the I'll turkey t- killer. I'll tell you, you know, this year I almost thought about going back to some Remington nitros when I saw that the TSS is $60 yeah, a box. So you're like, I'm paying $12 a shell, but. What well, let I me tell you, that you for? get that turkey close enough to where I know all of us want to shoot them. That Remington Nitro will knock them over the head just as good as I killed a mini with will. a green Remington Nitro, you know. And I might go back to a twelve gauge if I go back to the Nitros, but I killed turkeys for three or four years with the Remington Nitros with a modified choke. I'm to say I've used a modified choke for years. I, but that's also the i have also missed that turkey in Kentucky with you, Davis, with a modified choke. And yeah. I guarantee if I'd have had a full choke, that would have been a dead turkey. I miss turkeys man. today with the fullest choke you can have on 20-gauge TSS and the pattern so tight, you know, they're at 10, 15, 20 yards. It's like shooting a 22 at them. Yeah, it's like if you want to shoot a turkey at 60 yards, I can't even see a turkey at 65 oh, yards. Oh, man, you start looking barrel. down the beat of the gun, you're shooting at a big old blob. I did it. One time with you, Chad. I, I, <laughs> I think one. he was about 90 yards. Yeah, he might have been 90, but I was like, shit, my gun's packed. <laughs> we I'm need to call to Tyler in on this one and see yeah. what he says. I uh, did something that you shouldn't do as a turkey hunter, and you shouldn't shoot oh, a they turkey had to. that's too far away. <laughs> but I, you know, I've got a decent gun that I take turkey hunting with TSS, and all I heard was all this, you know, talk about, oh, you can shoot turkeys at 60, 70 yards away well me looking well, you down, took that serious i you, took it seriously and i pulled the trigger and that turkey flew he, off he, he was ready and, them, and i never even saw the turkeys it was pretty crazy we were uh yeah it was down a power line you would and, have never thought these turkeys would have been in this spot we had a party at our deer camp we were on a pier at a pond 
about and, 50 yards away from where I pulled the trigger. Yeah, and we partied there all night long from like 4 in the afternoon till 10 at night. We bass we left. Fished. I didn't want to hunt. Davis woke us up the next morning. I said, man, I'm not getting out of bed unless you get my brother because he's on the gun. When I saw them ready, I said, shoot. Davis said, on the gun, my ass. Yeah, so I I get up, we go, we're late, we end up, get out of the truck, put on your vest, and I hoot out, and the birds gobble, and I'm like, there is no way. And we walked down there, and I started calling, and here they came. And anyways, that's where that up. Yeah, right. (laughs) I'm set up right there. I can see. I can see probably 400 yards. You had the best seat in the house. I couldn't even see turkey. So I'm watching these three long beards strutting for what seems like forever. And they get closer and closer, and I'm like, well, surely I can hit them from here. I got these high-dollar shells, this good 12-gauge. I pull the trigger, and they fly off. It was a disaster. Well, I've learned more. You know, I hold my brother a lot who's can't hear out of one ear and uh, not a turkey hunter of his own. So I set him up in front of me, so I watch his hand motions when I know the turkeys are close, and – Boy, he'll get that gun ready and start taking safeties off. And I'm like, all right, he must see turkeys. And he usually tries to whisper, which isn't much of a whisper. So I knew they were close. He goes, I see him. I see him. It's three, four. And boom. And then about that time, and I said, did he get one? He goes, no, they're flying. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> and I was, I, it was one of those times where you, <clears throat> when you're hunting and you feel bad for doing something, Instantly. Oh, instantly. I mean, it was instant regret. I was like, Tyler, no, I'm so no sorry. hard feeling. I should have never was... done that. I mean, I've been hunting with Chad for a long time, both for a good time, too. And it was just a selfish decision to shoot a turkey because I saw him in range and it was, it was a disaster. So I, I don't shoot turkeys. I can shoot a turkey with honestly all the turkeys that I have killed in my lifetime. I could have probably killed them with birdshot. They're. 30 yards and closer. I mean, I like for a turkey to be in range where when I pull the trigger, I know he's going to die. And uh, you hear all this stuff and you see all these, you know, these, uh, I guess it's diagrams or whatever of shot patterns on, you know, a 410 at at 40 yards or a 12 gauge at 70. And and you get overconfident. and Well, and you know what those diagrams don't have? They're not shooting through briars no. and sweet gums and no. everything else. They're shooting at a target at 40 yards when they're looking dead at it in the middle you know, of nothing. vice grip and, you know, all yeah. sorts of other stuff. And it's like, I mean, my preferred method, and I'm an unselfish hunter. In that instance we're talking about with Chad, I took a selfish approach to a hunt, and it was the most – I've never regretted a decision like that in a turkey hunting setting ever before because I'm very uh, – I love going turkey hunting. I love seeing other people hunt. I love seeing them kill the turkey. I'm not somebody who gets caught up on how many birds I kill a year versus, you know, somebody else. And that was one of those times where you just wish you had a little bit more patience and you let somebody else get to pull the trigger. But It's kind of a new, cool new approach I've taken to a lot of turkey hunting. I enjoy – taking somebody that hadn't gone as much or killed as many turkeys or, you know, I like taking somebody that will experience the moment and they're so fired up and they're looking at that turkey. Man, that's how it should be. How cool is this? Like, you take somebody on a turkey hunt that has never turkey hunted, man, that one comes in there strutting and gobbling and doing his thing. I get chills talking about it. That should be, man. man, Like, there's there's so many people, and now, like, and, and I will say, I think that our podcast does a good job of this just because of the way that me and Austin are. And there's a lot of people that, that, that push this that I'm buddies with, and y'all too included. But there's so much now of like, man, you, we're going we're gonna to kill, say you're from Mississippi, you know. We're going to kill three turkeys here. We're going to go to these other states. We're going to kill four. We're going to kill this, 15 this. turkeys this year. Like, man, come on. A number's dude. not like, a thing to me. I don't care how many turkeys I've killed or you've killed. And, you know, you know the, the. No, that's like I was telling y'all outside. My youngest sister, who's never killed a turkey, texts me. I assumed I'd be going by myself opening day because I usually always go by myself opening day. She texts me and says she's got a, a doctor's appointment on 
at like 12 on on next Friday, which is opening day, is like, well, we're going. I mean, I'm not – I could – care less about taking my gun like we're go we're going i'm gonna put you on a turkey i'm gonna find one before before friday and i now granted i've put her on a bunch of turkeys and w- the shot is well sometimes it all has not work worked out, out but man that's so like to me that is so much more fun uh, than, you don't remember every kill that you've had but i tell you something you will remember and that's a lot of like good hunts you go on. Some of the best hunts I've ever been 100%. on didn't even revolve a kill. No. Well, dude, know? what we were talking about, which we were talking about this earlier during the happy hour, which two of the things I'm about to reference, I was the one pulling the trigger, but like, all right, the turkey that me and you went to Kansas opening morning when you killed, like, that was the coolest freaking thing. I mean, we had what oh, five, God, six wait. gobblers and, and coming in. And we flipped the like, coin the morning yeah, we before. Flipped the coin and the turkey was shoot. fifteen yards from you. Yeah, that gobbler? was our first. So I had like gone to Tennessee. Um, I had gone to Tennessee before Kansas, but other than that, that was our first like real, true out of state. There were goat. toms everywhere, <laughs> <laughs> and that and everybody up there calls them toms. They were and toms. toms. I was like, who is big a tom? toms? They were big toms, and uh. But dude, it, yeah, like that was, and it, and you killed that turkey, and it was like, oh my god, like we, it solidified everything. Like we came up here to Kansas, we did this, we made this happen. Then I go on to miss one in the same hunt. But then what we were talking about earlier, after I missed one, shoot that turkey, he cuts a backflip. Like we're. That's probably, I'm not going to lie, that's probably the most fired up I've ever, like, I can still vividly remember right when I saw that turkey that he, like, I was so nervous because that was my third, the day before was my third miss in the last two years, and so I was so nervous, and when I pulled the trigger and that turkey backflipped, I was, That I was mean, cool. That that's was cool. one of the most fired up I've been in a, probably ever. And how much ground they cover. You know, you heard that turkey. I didn't hear it. Oh, my God. And then we moved and then called again, and I had to pee. And uh, I'm sitting there. I I have my thing in my hand peeing, and Bo's like, sit down, sit down. I'm like, what? And I turn around, there's a turkey out there strutting. We were up under a big cedar tree with, like, a canopy Mm -hmm. falling. So, Well, then me and you in Indiana last year, like, you kill that turkey, and you're like, Bo, there's a lot of turkeys over here. You need to get over here. And like that's a full circle story, though. You know, we that's both cool, gotten uh, real excited about. He was, uh, you know. Oh, I just remembered. I'm gonna let you finish, but I just remembered such a crucial part of this story. But but go ahead. So we were. It's all kind of full circle, and that's how the hunting really is when you put it in the the big picture. But we've all locally hunted here, where we're from in Meridian, Mississippi, and Bo got big into. Hey man, I want to go. You know, I want to go try and hunt turkeys in in other places where we've never hunted before. See new land. Try and you know, see in new places. Out. That's and, what it's about. And really, just see how good you can be in an environment where you don't have a history, which will really test your woodsmanship. So, Bo, you know, we were sitting there one afternoon. He was like, "Hey, let's go hunting." And I was like, "You pick a place. I'll go with you." Kentucky was our first spot to go. Out of state, and uh, so we went to Kentucky, and Bo was on the trigger because he's on. He was on at that point a more firm mission of I'm going to kill a turkey in in every state that has a long beard, and so Kentucky was our first venture out, and we went there, and I said, "Man, you're on the trigger." So we get there, and we're hunting this place, and we get a turkey on. I mean, he's I don't know how far away was two of them. It two was, of them. It wasn't just beers. one. I mean, they were through some thick stuff, and I was, they were, I think, overly were, anxious. You were a little – you were positioned behind me, and I had the better shot on both of them. I mean, I could have killed – Well, and let me say right here, it's a good time to say that talking about the, the U.S. slam and all that, like – you get caught up in that stuff, and it will cost you. Like oh, I, you I forced that shot. Anxious. I forced that shot. I know For I sure. did because you I was like, "Here's my kill. opportunity. Here's yeah. my opportunity in Kentucky." And the if pressure. I just waited, which you know, at the time we weren't sitting next to each other, I didn't know that you had a good shot. But you know, 
it is so what it is. I've got a good shot on the turkeys, and Bo's to my left and back about 15 yards. I've got a good sight on two turkeys, but Bo's goal was to kill one in Kentucky, and our plan going up there was Bo's going to pull the trigger first, I'll shoot the next turkey if we get the opportunity. And it goes to that, like, you know, unselfish, you know, type of hunting that I think most turkey hunters have is where – you you want to see somebody su- succeed in in the actual killing of the bird and Bo pulled the trigger. We didn't kill the turkey, so I guess it was the next year we ended up going into Indiana. Two years later, two years two later, two years later. And at that point in time in Kentucky, we were hunting together because we were like, well, I mean, I'm I, I'm just along for the ride. Honestly, I want to see Bo succeed in his goal, so I'm. I'm, I'm and we were kind of unsure on hunting public land and all oh, that. I mean, I mean, it was all extent. new. It yeah, was all I mean, new. We'd never stepped foot in Kentucky. I'd never even been to Kentucky. Period. So this is uncharted ground, and uh, and so then we get to Indiana. So we leave Kentucky, no bird. We go to Indiana two years later, and we split off. I kill a turkey. I guess it was, you know, the 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 next morning. Or the first morning that we hunt. And second call, morning. Second morning. I call Bo and I'm like, hey, buddy, you got to come over here, man. I just killed a turkey and there's four of them right here with us. He comes over and it it was just the coolest thing. But, dude, they made us feel so stupid. Oh, like, man. they, they so worked the me. The way this hunt. They well, worked me man. left and right. And I was like, I, don't, I can tell you. I know where we can kill them and it's right here. Yeah, we were up on this little hill and we heard turkeys gobbling constantly. I mean, honestly, more turkeys than I've ever heard in my life. And every time, because around here, you know, you hear a turkey guy when you go to you it. it. You tr- so we would do that, and, and I was getting nervous about my calling. I was starting to think that something was wrong with my calling because every time we would hear a turkey gobble, we would go to it, set up, yelp, that'd be it. It'd be, it was over. And you, could go, we were going up to turkeys that were gobbling 10, yes, 15 Yes, and times. the first time you yelp. And I'm not a good caller, but I'm not a bad caller. Oh. So, like, I've killed many turkeys that I've yelped up, but these turkeys, nah, uh-uh. So, <laughs> we finally, I think it was, I think it was our last, it wasn't, I think it was our last it afternoon our, it we were going to hunt yeah. the next morning. It, we could hunt the next morning, but mm-hmm. it was our last afternoon. And, man, we, same deal. We yeah, heard all these Bo, turkeys I gobble. Said, and we said, we knew they were coming to that hill, though. We got to get on the knob, and we got to sit there. I didn't have a gun. I didn't have nothing at this point. And we had the morning before, so I killed, oh, we had I killed one ten yards. Morning. Yes, and I would have just blown your head off. And I told him, I was like, "Come on, we got to we got to get on." We got on that afternoon. The next morning, I was like, "Look, for two mornings straight, they have roosted here. They're gobbling here. We can kill them. They're coming one direction every day." And uh, he saved my eardrums and didn't pull the trigger because he was literally shooting over my nose. You know that that. that I mean, afternoon. fifteen steps. It was at the most. It was close. So we let him go, and then that next day, he got him. I mean, it was. I mean, it, but but we set up on that hill because we were like, we're not chasing them anymore. We are done chasing them. So I was we, done chasing them. So we Both heard turkeys. So chasing. we heard turkeys gobble all afternoon, and. We're just sitting, and it was the first time I'd ever done it. We literally would hear a turkey gobble 200, 300 yards away. And be like, no, no, we, we, we're we going to chill here. We'll see if you come over this way. And then finally that joker gobbled, and he sounded like he was. In your ear. 40. And it, them two, I mean, that they, they did it. They slipped right up in there, and it was. Game over. And it's a small knob, too. Like One knob. That, it was one knob. That thing hitting 35 yards no. across. And I'm sitting in the back. I'm laid down in this in this oak tree. And Bo's 10 feet in front of me, 15 feet in front of me. And out of the corner of my eye, I see these two long beards. And he, I can't even see Bo at this point because I'm locked. I'm like, oh, my goodness. Hopefully he sees him. So I Got shoot. Him. So I'm left-handed, but I shoot right-handed, and I am aimed. Let's just say they're like 180 degrees behind oh. me. Yeah, but I catch them out of the corner of my eye. I'm like, oh my god! I mean, you're cocked oh all the god. way sideways to right, pull well, the trigger on right. these turkeys. All right. Well, I hope Davis doesn't catch 
Hope he doesn't Some catch his TSS. We do not but lean up. We are getting a shot right here. But I had given him the go ahead the morning before. I was like, "Look, shoot over me." Shoot he me. Did. Shoot me. My, my brother did that last year. I was like, "Dude, just shoot. Yeah. It don't matter if you hit me. Just shoot." <laughs> hey, I want the. Turkey it doesn't back. matter if you hit me. Make sure you kill that it, turkey. Kill the turkey. And boy, so he we pulled had, that trigger, and I saw Bo stand up, and we can't see no, because his knob is so tiny. But as soon as you shoot, there. like the turkey's gone, like he's off the, he's they're on the edge he's already. Down but so as soon as you shoot, I'm like, oh god, yeah. Okay. So when I had told Bo, I was like, man, I had been hunting here for two days, and every day I have seen multiple times they're coming to this ridge, but you can't barely get to it because if you try and like skirt around the side, you're thirty yards below them. There's mm-hmm. so much elevation change that you got to be on their level, or you're just you're out of you're you out of be play. where they want to be. And he popped him, and boy, he jumped up, and he was like running around. I saw he saw him, and I was. That's what it's about. I mean, so, so what I thought about during that story, or before you started that story, and I'm gonna butcher it because I can't remember like his name or anything. But what about that? What about our angel on that trip? What do you remember his name? You talking an about angel. that buddy that was uh in the parking lot? So me and Bo stayed in this. We've been staying in tents when we do these uh little you know, public land excursions, and we found this motel, and we've been staying there. So we got food, but we got nowhere to cook them in the hotel. So we go out to the parking lot, and we're grilling, and uh, there's this gentleman out there. He's a worker at the hotel. He's out there, like, fake sweeping right by us. Like, he wants to talk to us so bad. It's funny who you meet on these. Oh, my God. (laughs) It's what it's all about. He's just (laughs) he's over there fake sweeping by us, and he keeps wanting to talk, wanting to talk. He's like, y'all doing all right today? And we're just like, yeah, we're doing good. And he just keeps talking, keeps talking, keeps talking. So he's like, all right, we're going to have a conversation with this guy. So we talked to him, and he's our our gift from – from from heaven, because I mean, he, he brings like, us the good luck, and we had we had been staying in that hotel for like two days, and we hadn't seen him. That was the only time we saw him, and he was like, "This was while we were cooking lunch, and we're cooking and, like a hot dog. yeah hot dog." So he's yeah. like, "Y'all gonna get one this afternoon? I know did, you. Did you kill that evening? <laughs> yes, That's yeah. if you killed it in that. We oh. said we're gonna go because to, I we were like because the next morning we knew we were gonna hunt and then go home. We're like man, we're we're giving it hell, but it's getting tough. Like it's we're coming hard, down to the end, and uh, we're coming down to the end of it. And he's like, "Y'all gonna get one this evening, I think." Oh, he was I, fired up. He was our, he was team. Did, did y'all talk to this cat afterwards? Or no? We that's what. Him. That's why we never say he's an him. angel because he's, <laughs> never we never saw him. We want to take him to he bird. Was like, real. man, dude, we got him. We don't. Here's think a he, leg, brother. But no, we never we don't think him. he was a real person. I think he was just a straight up angel. That works out. We never saw him before. He came out there. He talked to us during lunch. What did he say? That, what did he talk about that big old hen they had killed? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he said they killed a monster hen in a the big, fall. Hey, big hen. Big. Okay, I so mean, they got big hens in oh, Indiana? Man. Yes, hey, let they're corn fed. Hey, let me they're corn fed. Turkeys right. in Indiana. When I walked up to that bird that I killed in Indiana, I was like, God, oh my. Mighty, I have never seen a beard so big and thick in my entire life. I saw then, his beard in his trophy room. Yeah, in there. and Bo's beard in the trophy room ain't as big as Dave's. It's not as beard as is. It's not as big as the. And it's not like a you know a comparison. Like oh, who kills the biggest? Yours had a rope too. Oh, dude, it was it just was so that's just sick. what how they are. That's pretty cool. I'm going to Illinois this year, and I hope it's the same. It'll probably be in in actually. A month from tomorrow, I will be in Illinois killing turkeys. If any of y'all listen in Illinois, uh, in Polk County, if the Polk land doesn't work out, let's go hunt together. Please let me tag along. And my new buddy, by the way, this is off topic, but my new buddy that listens in the Bahamas, I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you. Do they have turkeys in the Bahamas? No, but I got a listener in the Bahamas now. (laughs) Can we we go there? Can can we come hunt with No, but we can go kill fish. I guess you Uh don't say kill fish. You say catch fish. Yeah, you catch those. Eat them. That's what it's about. It's going with your buddies, having fun, seeing everybody's success. I just enjoy walking around the woods with my buddy. I got somebody to talk to. And and when you sit there and you I don't like hunting by myself as much. Oh, I hate hunting by myself. I kind of, you get somebody with me, I'm like, man, we should walk over there. The person you're with is like, okay. You're like, all right. Well, and I always tell people too, you know, kind of tying it back, I guess, to a little bit of real estate. 
you find out more about property this time of year than you ever, if you're a turkey hunter, than you ever will because oh, you're going to is... walk your whole place. You're going to traverse. I mean, like every foot of that place, you're going to know by the end of turkey season. It's the time to scout. I mean, if you're a deer hunter, turkey hunter, whatever you are, looking at your property, I mean, doing it now when I guess you got the springtime blooming, but, you know, things are still kind of open and stuff like that. So it is a good time. Uh, maybe find you some sheds, stuff like that. So, you know. So, all right, I don't want to keep these guys any longer. Um, they got to go home to their to their families. I guess I need to too. But just fired up about turkey season. So, um, neither one of y'all have done any listening yet, have you? I had very light. Not I'm bad on serious. Uh, I hate media. listening without a gun. Oh, man, I love very, about very tough I love. turkeys. I thought you were talking about the podcast. Yeah, I'm bad on social media too. I'm bad on. Yeah, so Davis doesn't listen to our podcast. I don't understand. We literally had the Tiger Woods of turkey calling on last week, which I've heard multiple times, and I'm gonna fire that thing up and and check it out. All right. So anyway, if you're still listening, though, we really appreciate it. We're this is like I said, this is just kind of a test to kind of see what y'all like. Um. We're just fired up for turkey season and wanted to kind of talk turkey. Uh, next week, we'll be back to our regular podcast. We have Olivia Lappin coming on, who is a quail biologist, and it's going to be really interesting. I think I'm looking forward to it. But uh, let us know if you like this. Uh, put it on our social media. Tell us what you think. We'll have some more bonus episodes like this. But um, we will see you all next week. And. If you're in Mississippi, good luck next Friday.